Amidst the unfolding crisis in the Middle East, Americans find themselves caught between borders and bureaucracies. Nayela El Sharafa, a hairdresser from Camarillo, California, visited Gaza to care for her ailing mother. But what was meant to be a 10-day visit turned out to be a harrowing ordeal. She went to go visit her sick mother, and this conflict broke out on the seventh day. And she tried to get out multiple times. Uh, the first time it was too busy, they told her to try the other day. Then when she tried on the 10th of October to get out, uh, she was very close, about 10 minutes away from the from exiting the Rafah border and getting into Egypt when the Israeli airstrike uh, struck the uh, uh, the border, the Rafah border. Over 600 Americans were trapped at the border alongside thousands of international citizens. Evacuation efforts revealed stark differences in the treatment of Palestinian Americans versus Israeli Americans. Nabil took an unconventional route, initially registering his mother as an Israeli in a desperate bid for her evacuation. In the beginning, there was only the option for Israel because they were focused on getting the Israeli Americans out first. Uh, and then after a few days, they added the Gaza button and then later West Bank, Lebanon, Syria, etc. And so I started to see the messages between the differences and discrepancies between the Israeli American and Palestinian American. You know, the Israeli Americans get uh, cruise ships, food, Wi-Fi, charter flights uh, to get out multiple borders, right? They're free to get out from. Uh, and then the Palestinian Americans, it's sort of all this ambiguity, you give a green light to bomb your own citizens. That, that makes no sense to me. While thousands of Americans were rescued from Israel by chartered cruise ships and flights, those in Gaza faced a different reality. My priority is to get these clients back on U.S. soil. So even those clients that have crossed into Egypt in the last few days, that's not good enough for me. I don't have enough direction from my government, from the U.S. government, on what happens when the clients get to Egypt. As violence intensifies, over 400 Americans have been evacuated from Gaza, as hundreds wait for their name to be put on a list. So what has been happening is that every day a list is being put out with the names of people that can reach the Rafa crossing and cross from Gaza into Egypt. This list has been a huge source of stress for people because families are being separated. So one family member's name will appear on the list and the other family won't. The list did not include families as units and families were not let through. I have a two-year-old and an eight-year-old. They have made it on the list. They're American citizens, but their mom, who is a green card holder, is not being allowed to cross. Nayela and her family are one of several who are suing the State Department for their unequal treatment during the evacuations. It's really an equal protection case, right? It's really all about treating all U.S. citizens equally. Our legal argument is centered on the fact that you have uh, similarly situated people in the same war zone, separated by maybe a few miles, being treated very differently. Um, we're making a claim for equal protection of these people. We're asking the government to do what it already has done for one class of people and has yet failed to do for another class. As Nayela finally crossed into Cairo, her journey underscores the debate over the responsibility of the U.S. government to its citizens. These were people who had just days and weeks before traveled to Gaza to see family members or to visit. These are quite literally your neighbors. This is people in your community. They're not people who you see on a TV screen or hear about in the newspaper. They're people who, are, who live and work with you. For CGTN America, Juliana Quinones.